understanding leasing and how to run it. Broad subject, maybe. Maybe not as broad as you think. Let's talk about it. Coming up next, Lego. Lego. Cut the music up. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another edition of On Point Trucking Contest with your main man, LaShawn Parks. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're here rocking out with me, and I do appreciate that. And uh, you guys already know my alias names, just in case you don't and you're new to my channel. Uh, I'm also known as kind of a big deal, all right? Also known as an internet problem, and I'm also known as YouTube up-and-coming sensation. Yeah, all of that. But thank you for, for, for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, like, share, comment. Do what you need to do. You know what I mean? Uh, just putting out some information here for you guys uh, as far as leasing goes. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, don't know how you got referred. Don't know if you just ran across it from, from the search box. But I do appreciate you being here. Like I said, in my intro, you could have been anywhere else in the world. But you're here with me. And you're rocking out watching the video. And I appreciate that. All right? So let's get into our topic today. Well, before I get into my topic today... First of all, y'all know I vape. So, I need to put a little bit more juice in here before I get to talking about my topic. But while I'm juicing this up, it is a couple of people that I want to give a, a shout out to and a thank you to. Because um, right now I'm here at the terminal in, in Springfield with Prime. And uh, it seems like every time I come here, I just get an overwhelming amount of support and uh, thank yous. So, um, a couple of people that I want to say thank you to. I did a video with uh, Jacob. I don't know if you guys subscribe to his YouTube page, but he has a YouTube page. Uh, his name is Jacob. Uh, Jacob, let me see. I know Jacob told me what his uh, what is Jacob. No, Prime Driver Jacob. So y'all go look him up on YouTube and follow him. He has good stuff for guys that's coming into the industry. Jacob is on the refrigeration side of uh, Prime. He also is a trainer, he's a PSD trainer and a TNT instructor, so uh, he has great information. He also uh, went from company driver to a lease driver, so great person to speak with as far as making that transition from being a company driver to a uh, lease driver, which I actually did an interview. Me and him did a, a, a video together, which that video I'll be putting out uh, once I get it edited and done with graphics and everything, because I recorded that one with the DSLR. I'm gonna get that one up next weekend. So next weekend's video is gonna be the interview with Jacob. So uh, you guys make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Another person, uh, and y'all gotta excuse me because I took down a lot of people's names that uh, that, that, that staffed up and uh, gave me support. Shout out to my man Roosevelt. Uh, let's see, Roosevelt, what's your last name is? Looks like Roosevelt Hernandez. Roosevelt Hernandez. Let me show y'all what Roosevelt did for me, okay, real quick. We about to get into the video, okay? So just stay stay focused with me, guys. All right, stay focused. We're gonna get into the video. I know I'm rambling a little bit, but Roosevelt brought me a whole two liter of Pepsi. So I gotta shout him out for that, man. Shout outs to Roosevelt on that, man. I'll put it back in the refrigerator, and uh, that was big big ups on that, man. There's a lot of other guys that came up to me that uh, took pictures. I took pictures with a lot of people. Like you guys already know, I met up with a buddy of mine, Black Lion. 816 shout outs to him he's going out now he's gone out now with his trainer so uh shout outs to him you know you can reach out to me if you need any help all right um like i said it's a couple other guys i'm sorry if i didn't rem remember you guys name off the top of my head i think one was melvin talk to melvin or marvin um <laughs> so many names all right i do apologize if i didn't say your name if you are watching the video but you guys know who you are I took pictures with you guys so shout outs to you guys all right but today's video, what we're going to talk about is understanding leasing, okay? A lot of people have came to me and want to know how to understand leasing, okay? There's, there, there's rules to this, okay, when you, when you get into leasing, okay? A lot of people uh, tend to think that leasing is basically your glorified company driver, okay? 
And I couldn't tell you that you're that those people that think like that are so far off of the brim that it, 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 it's pretty sad. Okay. The reason why you're not a glorified company driver, you're not even like a company driver. Simple fact is this: you are still a owner operator as a as a lease driver. Okay. Whether the the, the owner operators who own their trucks want to believe that, they want to accept you as an owner operator, you know, things of that nature. It is what it is, okay? It's nothing but a title, okay? So when you go from being an owner-operator or a lease driver, at the end of the day, they're hand in hand, okay? Just one person, as an owner-operator, he paid off his truck. He doesn't have a truck note anymore, so now, you know, he's collecting more of the revenue to himself than as a lease driver where you gotta pay for, you you're making truck payments and stuff of that nature. So that's the only difference, okay? I want people to understand this because a lot of people don't understand it. Okay, they think that leasing is 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 a, you're basically a company driver paying for the company stuff. No, you're not. Okay, if you're a company driver, as I've always indicated before, company drivers, you hop behind the wheel and you go where you go. You go where you dispatch. You don't know much of anything. Okay, you don't know uh, your, your freight lanes. You don't know the freight rates. You don't know anything. You just know that you know you're getting paid 41 cents a mile or however much you make per mile. And that's just that, okay? You don't know what the actual cost is that, that this shipper is is paying out, you know what I mean? Or, or this receiver is paying for this product to get shipped to them, right? In hindsight, there's no way that that can be your glorified company driver, okay? When you pay for your own fuel on operators, they own their own truck, they pay for their own fuel. They pay for their own insurance. Lease drivers, they pay for their own insurance. Um, we have over here at Prime, you're not forced dispatch when you're leased, okay? When you're a company driver, you're forced dispatch. You go where they tell you to go. And it's pretty much, you know, if ands, or buts, maybe it's about it. As a lease driver, you go home when you want to go home, okay? Own operators, when you own your truck, you go home when you want to go home. So you stay out on the road, and that's just what it is. The difference now in that aspect, in understanding the difference in owning your truck and in, in leasing your truck, is a person that owns his truck, if he goes home, week to week to week he can stay home for as long as he wants to he owns a truck so the payment he doesn't have to worry about a payment or going in a negative hole okay whereas if you're a lease driver you know you have payments every week or every month or what have you that's coming out okay so you really can't have that luxury of sitting home now is owning your truck the better way to go absolutely okay absolutely that's the way you want to go because if something does happen where your truck is down or it's broken down or it's in the shop you're not being charged that weekly or monthly note, okay? Um, in the same token, when you become an owner operator, now make sure that you have yourself a damn good mechanic, okay? If you're not mechanically savvy already yourself, okay? And that's what, to me, I've always told you guys that the steps to, to get into that level of owning your truck, you have to climb a ladder. Nothing is, you should just jump into going to a dealership and owning your truck okay I've told you guys this okay so this is understanding leasing understanding the rhyme and reason I've already done a video about that one about the rhyme and reason for leasing now this is basically understanding why it is that you run your your lease and how you should run your lease efficiently okay and effectively now if you talk to owner operators and I've already said that owner operators and lease guys are pretty much the same thing it's just uh, basically ego stroke to speak okay owner operator like I say he just doesn't have a payment he's done paying on his truck okay so at some point in some time he's been there where he's paid on that truck or made payments on that truck or maybe he he saved up enough money to go out and buy that truck inherit money to go buy the truck what have you okay to me I have a lot more respect for people that have leased their truck and made their payments instead of somebody who has inherited money and went and bought a truck and then jumped in the truck and I really I can't that's how you get down, that's how you get down. But I have more respect for a person who went through the chains of commands of leasing and then went to own operator or doing the lease purchase to own operator. That's just, that's where I come, you know, how I look at it. Now, as far as doing your loads and stuff like that, owner operator and lease drivers is still the exact same thing, okay? Owner operators are never taking freight that they have to sit on for a long period of time. The name of the game when you're leasing or being an owner operator is to Take, have that freight on your trailer or on, on the, your trailer or whatever you're pulling, refrigeration, flatbed or whatever. It's to have that on your back 
for the shortest amount of time, period of time. You don't want, owner operators and lease drivers don't want the mileage, okay? That's not what our game is about, okay? This is, like I said, this is coming to understanding leasing, okay? You, you don't want long freight, okay? As owner operator, lease driver, because what are we paid by? We're paid by load. We're not paid by mileage. I mean, in in the aspect, you do get paid by mileage, but at the end of the day, as an owner operator, lease driver, you're paid by the load. Okay, and that's what matters the most to you. So the quicker that you get this load off, the more money or more revenue you can make. I.e., you don't want no loads that's going out to California, and you're a solo driver. You know it's going to take you uh, four to five days to get out there. Okay, if you're running under legal DOT clock and things of that nature. You don't want to be sitting on that load for four or five days and it's only going to pay you, you know, $4,000 to do it as a solo driver, you know, because then when you're sitting on that load for four, you know, you got to sit on that load for four or five days and it's paying you, you know, $4,000, $3,500. You're not, it's not a good deal. Okay, you're sitting on that load for way too long to make that amount of money so you're, 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 you're cutting your time down okay as a lease driver and owner operator driver you want to try to get stuff off within a drive shift period okay when I mean by drive shift period I mean you want to get something off within your 11 hour drive time clock okay and like I said everything I speak on is on DOT uh, running legal okay not running illegal uh, I, I'm not going to speak on illegal driving just because I don't do it. So, you know, I don't, I, I'm not the person to go to or the YouTube channel to watch if you trying to figure out how to drive illegally. But on legal terms, you want, as a lease driver, owner operator, you want to be able to get something off or be at your shipper, I mean, be at your receiver at the end of that drive shift, okay? You don't want something where it's going to be three and four days and you're sitting on it because that's costing you money. Here goes a prime example. For some reason, it never seems to fail that the longer distance that you go, the more that you're spending in expenses and fuel, and it seems like the more that they take off on the rate. Okay? And for my lease guys and owner operator guys that's already experienced, they can they can testify to this. The further you go, it seems like the rate gets cheaper. Okay? So like if you went 600 miles, this load might have paid you $3 or better. But if you take this same load and go out to California with it and you go on the East Coast and you got to go 2,500 miles, now it seems like it's only going to pay you like, I don't know, uh, 3,500, 4,000. Now when you do the math on that, you go from going 600 miles and it paying you uh, 1,800, making a three making three dollars a mile to now going 2,500 miles and making 35 four thousand you just took your rate it, 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 it kills your rate is what I'm trying to tell you so distance kills your rate as a lease driver as an owner operator that's something that you have to understand in the lease game and owner operator we're not looking for mileage that's for company guys that's for guys who make sense per mile they're looking for those long mileage. They're looking for the 2,500, the 3,000, all that. Okay, they look. They look for that. That's that's bread and butter to them because the longer they haul, the more they make. The shorter they haul, the less they make. It's totally opposite when you're doing leasing. Okay, when you're leasing, it's the shorter you make more, the longer you lose. So this is why I speak so much on the short hop game when you're a lease driver. Um. That's one key thing of understanding in leasing, okay? Another thing that, like I've indicated before in leasing that you have to understand is your feeling, okay? You are solely in control of your feeling, so you wanna make sure that you're shopping around for the best fuel, for the cheapest price fueling. At the same time, there is some guys out there that believe in the IFTA and that you follow the fuel taxes to, to find where you get the cheaper rate at for fueling. That is true, but if you're starting out in leasing, that can be a little advanced for you, okay? That can be a little advanced for you. So what you want to start doing is maybe incorporating that into your mind as you go further along uh, in your lease, 
in your own operator, okay? And now as you go along, you progress. But if you're new into it, trying to figure out the fuel taxes, the IFTA, and stuff like that, it can get mind boggling for you. So when you're new, basically what you wanna do is look for the cheapest fuel, where you can find buy the cheapest fuel. If you're with Prime, they have it where they map out for you where the cheapest fuel is along your route. And you know, if you just do a uh, good trip plan, uh, good trip planning, <laughs> then you'll be able to know where to get your fuel at, okay? Now those are some things that are in your control. Uh, as lease drivers, once again, we want to limit how far we run, correct? All right, I said this. At the same time, we wanna limit how far we deadhead to get these loads, okay? You don't wanna deadhead too far because when you deadhead, deadhead is actually fuel that you have to come out of pocket for, okay? And a lot of people get this misconstrued. A lot of people will add the mileage for the deadhead plus the mileage from the, the shipper to the receiver. You have to understand something. The rate that they're giving you is from the shipper to the receiver. Is not the rate from where you're deadheading from included to the shipper and then to the receiver. No, 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 no. And there's a lot of guys that get that misconstrued and they calculate that in and then they want to know, oh, this is only like a dollar ten a mile. That you can't factor that in, okay? You cannot factor your deadhead in to your cents per mile because they're not paying you to deadhead, okay, when you're owner operator. That's why you want to keep your deadhead to a minimum. Okay, to a minimum to put more money into your pocket and if you do have the deadhead you want to try to get the best fuel mileage that you can so that you're not burning up so much of your fuel um, and in the previous video I had I explained that you know I try to keep my deadhead with un under 200 miles I don't really want to go anything over 200 miles unless that load is just paying excellent it has to be paying excellent other than that I, I, just, I don't want a deadhead over 200 miles and, and with some people 200 miles is, is a lot. You know what I mean? By me saying 200 miles, yeah, I have some of these owner operators and lease guys say, hey, you're crazy. I'm not even deadheading that far. So it just all depends. But that is one rule that you want to keep your deadhead to a minimum. Okay? Keep it to a minimum. Um, and that's pretty much the base of it. You know, I got more videos that I'm going to come out. I'm breaking this down for you guys bit by bit, step by step. We're not gonna make the videos too long. Right now, I see we're rocking out at 17 minutes. So this is uh, gonna be part one. I'm actually gonna start it out. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me for uh, my video, my DVD that I was gonna sell for $100, the, uh, the steps to being successful in leasing. Um, and they wanna know when it's gonna go on sale. It's not gonna go on sale. If you tune in to me, you subscribe to me, I'm about to get this to you guys for free, all right? So what we're gonna do is, this is part one. Part one is understanding. Understanding leasing, okay? Just gave that to you. Um, and we're just gonna, eventually I'm just gonna keep on going and going and going, and as you stay tuned in and, and as we go along with these videos, I'm basically gonna give you the DVD for free, okay? It's gonna be given to you for free. You're not gonna to have to pay for anything. Just stay in tune with the channel. Only thing that I ask is that you know you uh, subscribe to the channel, you share the channel, you tell a friend to tell a friend about the channel, um, and I you know just continue to support me. And I'm gonna give it to you guys for free. Right? Try to get you guys make making some some decent money. There's a lot of guys out here that make YouTube videos that, that help company drivers. There's a lot of guys that do owner operator videos, but really don't do on operator videos they, they don't really give you the information and uh, me I'm just gonna keep it 100 I'm gonna give you guys everything that I know and all the information that I have and give it to you guys to use and as my cliche goes you know that I got from Jay-Z he says you know uh, it's always I'm always gonna give you guys food for thought but it's up to you guys to do the dishes all right and what that basically means is I'm gonna give you the knowledge I'm gonna give you I'm gonna point you in the direction but it's up to you to do your homework and to want to be in that success lane, okay? I can I, I can give you, I can lead you to, like they say another cliche, I can lead you to the, I can lead the horse to the well or to the, to the, to the, to the water, but I can't force you to drink it, okay? And that same way with me. I can, I can give you this information, I can't force you to drink it, all right? So I hope that this video was helpful to you. This is going to be the part one 
of how to be successful in leasing. All right, part one. That's what I'm gonna name. It. I'm gonna name it part one: understanding leasing. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna have another vape. Shout out to uh, my YTTA group. If you guys ain't down with us already, download Zello. Search the group YTTA. We have a walkie-talkie app. Come in there, get great information. Uh, shout out to all the other groups that are out there. Uh, Team RG, they doing their thing. Uh, and also uh, STA, which is Super Truckers of America. Shout out to you guys as well. And uh, if you ain't saying nothing positive, you ain't helping nobody else out, you know, I don't deal with you. That's just how I look at it. So if anybody asks me about anybody that's negative, I don't know who they are. That's just how I look at it. If you're saying anything bad about LaShawn or you say anything bad about anybody I'm affiliated, YTTA, Trucker Brown, Trucker Named J, Carolina Tanker, uh, SoCal, uh, anybody, King Louie, uh, who else I got? Black Lion, 86816. If you're saying anything negative about them, man, I just don't deal with you. I mean, that's just how I feel. Those are my people. That's who I rock with. And that's what I'm going to rock with for, 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 forever. So we're going to be successful. So until then, man, let me get a vape, man. Pretty good, man. I got a, I think I got, what I got? I got juicy pear. It's like a pear flavor, so it's pretty decent. But uh, to the next video, man. I'm going to catch y'all later, man. Y'all know how I end that thing. Deuce, deuce. Peace out. You do what you want when you pop it.